When the wife prostrated herself on her husband's body and apologized with tears in her eyes, her husband responded with nothing but infinite indifference. She hoped that her husband wouldn't ruin our life because of a violin. Her husband angrily pushed her away, saying that he had never loved her and told her to think about it in her own head. On the fifth day of the hunger strike, Ali was so weak he couldn't even hold a cigarette for five days. He'd been calling out for death, but even as weak as he was now, he still couldn't see death. In eight days, he remembered the image of his mother before she died. He was at her bedside day and night, but she blamed him for the delayed arrival of the Grim Reaper because of his prayers. It was only when he was driven to play the violin in the courtyard that his mother was finally spared the pain of her illness and dissipated into a wisp of smoke. Thinking about this, Ali couldn't help but suspect that there must be someone praying silently for him somewhere. And that's why the Grim Reaper couldn't come as he wished. But he probably never knew that the one who prayed for him late at night, every day, would be his greedy and playful little son. On the sixth day of his hunger strike, Ali saw the Grim Reaper as he wished. But he couldn't tell if the Grim Reaper was real or just a hallucination on his deathbed. On the seventh day of the hunger strike, the doctor gave him a nutritional injection. But no amount of medical expertise can help a man who wants to die. With tears in her eyes, his wife apologized to Ali and asked him to stay with her and her children. Ali reaches out and touches his wife's face tenderly, but the tenderness in his eyes belonged to another woman. Just as no one knew that his wife had a crush on Ali since she was a child, no one knew that Ali had a deep-seated relationship when he was young. That year, he studied with the most famous violinist in the region, but the maestro never approved of his music. He thought Ali's technique was excellent, but his music had nothing to do with art. He told Ali that life was like a breeze, and that the breeze contained its own uniqueness. And all you have to learn is to reach out and grab it. Ali was depressed for a long time by the guru's obscure words, because he couldn't figure out what the master meant by breath. It was only when a pair of small feet kicked up a breeze past him that he seemed to wake up from a dream. The man followed the breeze from street corner to street corner. Finally, in a watch shop, Ali saw the breath of his life. And so Ali fell, mesmerized by the elegant woman in front of him. It was only when the girl disappeared from sight that he bought the expensive clock in a trance. But it was the clock that emptied his pockets, that gave him the excuse to see Eleanor again. He kept breaking the clock and taking it to his boss for repairs. Finally, on his seventh visit, he saw Eleanor again. He seized the opportunity and bravely called out to Eleanor. After an awkward and sincere introduction, Eleanor was amused by Ali. She asked him what he wanted. He asked her if she could take a walk with him. Without hesitation, she said yes. After that, their story began. They went on dates at the cinema without anyone knowing. In a rented room, they felt the beautiful notes. They watched amazing sunsets and made a promise to be together on a romantic mountain. But when Eleanor took Ali to her father, their relationship was not supported by Eleanor's father. After sending his daughter away, Eleanor's father began to humiliate him mercilessly. You're just a poor musician. You can't make my daughter happy. You young people's love comes and goes so quickly. After you left, it was only a matter of days before Eleanor forgot you. Eleanor's father left Ali with no honor. But as he left, he turned round and said firmly, I can assure you I will never forget your daughter. It was raining hard that day. Eleanor cried in the rain for a long, long time. In this materialistic and capitalistic society, the relationship was not blessed and eventually died. Soon after, Eleanor accepted her father's arrangement and married a much older local official. Ali returned to the maestro. His music was no longer virtuosic, but full of endless sighs. The maestro listened and told Ali, From now on, you are a great musician. Because you have finally captured the sigh of life, the maestro gave the man his most prized violin. With this violin, the man began his 20-year tour around the world. As the maestro said, every time he played the violin, it was as if life was sighing. Eleanor was always in every note he played. Eleanor was the sigh of his life. Later, after the tour, Ali followed his mother's advice and married a woman he didn't love. But the love that his mother had told him about didn't come, and he was never able to love the woman he didn't love. Maybe it's because he understands that there's another woman in his husband's eyes. Or perhaps it was just resentment over a childhood obsession. After endless arguments, his wife angrily smashed the violin that Ali had held so dear. What really killed Ali was the sorry he heard that day on his way back from buying a new violin. He called out to Eleanor, who was passing by. Apprehensively, he asked if he remembered him. Eleanor was silent for a moment and said, I'm sorry, I don't remember anything. 
Eleanor's grandson called her grandma and urged her to leave. Years later, we meet again. Eleanor doesn't remember him. Ollie was still trapped in his youth. She was now the children's grandmother. On the eighth day of his hunger strike, Ollie never woke up. On the day of his funeral, the people who loved him came, including the one he loved. He didn't hear the sigh of relief that day as he rounded the corner. He didn't know that the one he loved had never forgotten him either. Eleanor hid in the corner and wept silently. They both love each other, but they can't be together. This is the 2011 French film, Poulet aux Prunes. A man marries someone he doesn't love because the wife was unhappy that her husband didn't earn any money from playing the violin. She smashed the violin that he treasured so much. The man then decides to commit suicide by going on a hunger strike. During the days of his hunger strike, he went through his brother's counseling, his wife's apologies, his children's prayers, but he still didn't die until he met his first love, whose indifference completely took away the man's breath. He never woke up the next day. At the end of the story, his first love, who claimed to have disowned him, came to his funeral. This story tells us that if you really love each other, you must cherish your feelings for each other. I'm Bulldog Movie. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, comment and subscribe to my channel. See you in the next video.